can you believe these Ravens are sitting at 7-3 and three right now or top of their division in the AFC North? And they could possibly, pot is still early, but they are actually competing for a number one overall spot. I know it's going to take some help if they're going to get there. But anyway, it's still some people who are not sold on the Ravens yet. Now, can you believe that? Well, I, I can, and I know a lot of Ravens fans ain't even sold on the Ravens for a couple of different reasons, but we're going to look at some reasons that my guy Julius listed, but first and foremost, I got to give a special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons and the Team Keep It Clean channel members. Appreciate y'all for showing extra support to the channel. Thank you. If any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron or channel member, then you can go. It's all down below in the description. All that stuff is down there. Everything is down there, as a matter of fact. But regardless, if you want to, cool. If you don't want to, that's cool, too. I love y'all. Let's get into this first question from Julius. And he says, still not so. They ain't graven. As always, I would like to thank you for the content. I have a confession to make. I know John brought back the 2012 Super Bowl team to bring some encouragement and have a mind reader on that Monday night game. But I'm just not so that the Ravens really have a good grip on personnel packages and game preparation and execution. Too many players on our roster are not utilized or used at their best talent in situational football schemes. Can't argue that, man. But anyway, uh, he said, example, on the drop pass by Ricard, why not have that be Duvernay? Why not line up likely next to Andrews, Demarcus plus Duvernay outside with Justice Hill? You force the defense to commit. It's always this simple scheme where it's easy for the defense to defend the play or rally to the ball quickly. I remember back when Cam Cameron had gotten fired because they felt as if he was too conservative and they wanted to see more explosive plays. Same we find our team... Uh, in the same situation, where's the explosiveness? Where's the big runs that, that in 2019? What happened? Uh, we used to be dominant winners. I feel as though maybe Steve needs to bring Ozzy back. Well, I, I mean, Ozzy ain't go nowhere. I, Ozzy's still in the building. He, he's right there. Um, so, yeah, he, he ain't leave. He said that's really the only X factor between the 2019 season and now. Well, uh, no. that The 2019 season, that was Eric DaCosta. He was a GM back then. But anyway, uh, he said, it's not about the draft picks. It's not about a number one wide receiver. Ravens never prioritized that, never. It was always about personnel and scheme. Think about it. Rex Ryan had great utilization of personnel and packages. Kubiak, literally, literally the personnel packages had Joe looking like he had bounced back. Really, who was on top of that? Well, it was Ozzy. Maybe Greg needs more assistance in putting the right personnel together. On a better note, my guy, babyface Mike McDonald has really dialed into his craft and is really bringing back the true spirit of the Baltimore Ravens defense. Give that man his flowers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, what's your thoughts on the game and the utilization of personnel? Mm. I, I think it's definitely a cause for concern. Um, we, we've seen it too many times when uh, Ravens will have somebody get hot. They'll get hot in one game and then the next game. They just, they don't even get a shot. And it's not even, like, it'd be one thing if it's like, oh, whoa, man, the defense, they really taking this guy out the game. But a lot of times, the, the Ravens will end up taking the guy out the game. And it'll be like, what's going on, y'all? What's happening? Um, And there's still, like, it's, it's just, well, du Duvernay is probably the biggest question mark for me. Because I'm just very confused and concerned over the usage or lack thereof when it comes to Devin Duvernay. Um, we just don't see him used consistently and keep saying it. I say it all the time. When the ball's in Duvernay's hands, good things happen. But they don't really like getting the ball in his hands too often. Now, I, I hope, but it is the business. It, it, it's the NFL. It's the business. I would hope that Devin Duvernay, but this is what it looks like. But I would hope that this is not true, but it is business. So, But I would hope that Devin Duvernay is not getting the Gus Edwards treatment. To where they keep his numbers down because he's in a, he's not in a contract yet, but he'll be eligible to get paid after this year. If you keep his numbers down, you could be like, hey, and, and I mean, I remember Lamar Jackson a couple years ago. He called Devin Duvernay a secret weapon. And boy, that <laughs> that secret, it was a secret for two more years until now. Um, but anyway, with Devin Duvernay, uh, it's, he could be paid this year after this year. Uh, and then they can give him a little they can give him a little deal, a little extension. Um, but if you keep his numbers down then it'll be cheaper than if you let them numbers go up. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I would hope not because that would be like that would hinder your team. That would be hindering your team. That would not be making these Baltimore Ravens the best Baltimore Ravens you possibly could. But it is the business. So I can't put it past nobody. Um, 
but it's just a lot of sometimes it can be a lot of misusage of guys and, and non-usage of guys and um yeah with like you mentioned you, you you talked about how that pat ricard play it could have been devin duvenay now the difference with pat ricard and devin duvenay obviously one is a wide receiver one and the other one is sort of do it all type of guy pat ricard being that wide receiver one devin du duvenay devin do it all but anyway um if that would have been devin duvenay on that wheel route then he would have got a lot more attention than a pat ricard like pat ricard ain't people not really stunting pat ricard like that um they're like oh that's a fullback he going out eh, he got a chance to probably possibly make a catch but we ain't really stunt him like that but if it's a wide receiver um going at, well another wide receiver like devin duvenay going out there um then he will get a lot more attention but yeah man uh, it's, it's definitely a concern um and ravens like again i know you said you're still not sold and i, I can understand why ravens like i think the the biggest way that they're gonna be able to sell uh sell this team and, and make people be sold on them um obviously the defense keep doing what they've been doing uh the offense keep doing what they're doing but really uh playoff time man playoff time is that's gonna be the time when they they'll really be able to show like all right they, they are for real now of course with your record they seven and three so that's a beautiful thing they've won uh seven games they lost three and every single game they've had a double digit lead so i do think they are a, a competitor i do think they are a competitive team i think they are uh, they they are leaning on the side of contender um for, for sure uh because because they had double digit leads even when they weren't clicking like they've been clicking now um so with them cleaning a lot of stuff up that's a good sign so i, I would put them in the contender category um but it's weird because i like i feel like they're they are a contender i'm not completely so but they are a contender but again playoffs playoffs is going to answer li literally every single question that we really have about this team moving forward yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from subs this is a series where you can ask any question you want to uh, and we answer in the video just like this now um i was just telling one of my guys the other day because he hit me up he was like hey did you did you forget about the question man and, and i told him like look we we can't do every single question uh because we get a lot of questions well for the patrons for the patrons we do every question for the patrons um but as far as all the emails and stuff we, we can't always do every single one we have done about 99.99 percent of all the emails but there's sometimes when we just we can't so i appreciate the fact that y'all are patient y'all bear with me y'all have just been part of the process because it, again it's a lot of work it's a whole lot of work um but thank you all for being patient thank you all for rocking with us thank you all for just being y'all so anyway next question came from the copper four he said what's up brother it's at that point in the year that we should have a good enough idea the playoff picture eh, i wouldn't say that i see what you're saying but it's like so much could change from now until the end of the year but anyway he said i'm confident that the ravens will be able to put away the majority of the teams we have left to face uh to to secure a place in the playoffs but man considering lamar's track record in playoffs should we be expecting another first or second round exit if we can't change the narrative then i can't see myself tuning into the playoffs unless we make the conference finals love from australia man hashtag ravens flock let's fly see i don't believe that i i don't believe that so you're telling me if um if we don't at least make it to the the conference finals then you ain't gonna be watching the playoffs man nah you you just talking you you're gonna be watching every single raven playoff game hopefully you get to see what four four of them or five of them however many it is. i think four that would be to get to the super bowl but anyway um yeah you're gonna be right there locked in uh but yeah it's it's it's, it's crazy because with with the playoff record um they would be like oh lamar is what one in three i think it is it's like i'm not saying that you do it but i know a lot of uh with media they'll be like ah qb wins uh Q wins is a team stat they'll be like wins is a team stat it's not a qb stat it's a team stat but then when it comes to playoffs they'll be like oh lamar he's one in three 
Um, but anyway, yeah, the Ravens, they, they got to be better in the playoffs. They got to be better in the playoffs. Lamar got to be better. The offensive line got to be better. The run game got to be better. The pass game got to be better. Um, the receivers got to be better. Coaching got to be better. They they need to, if they get there this year, which they should, but if they get there this year, they need to be prepared. I think that's been the Ravens' biggest thing. They just have not been prepared, and it shows. Next question came from Tavon, and I, I like how we're getting some questions from some new people that we don't really get questions from, so I appreciate y'all. He said, good evening, Engraven. First, let me start. I uh, truly enjoy the channel and, and the content you put out. Hey, I appreciate it, Tavon. Thank you. Uh, he said, here's my question. I've heard you say plenty of times, basically, the Ravens are creatures of habit. Every time we've won, the Super Bowl has been on the back of a stellar defense and an offense that can get by. Not, not in 2012. That, that offense was definitely not just an offense that could get by. Uh, they had weapons everywhere at every level. Um, they had uh, Ray Rice, young running back. They had Von Leach blocking away. The they had a, a good offensive line. And they just made a switch at the offensive line on during, at the playoffs. But um, they had Anquan Bolden as the good veteran receiver. Then they had Torrey Smith as the this very young, speedy wide receiver. And they had Jacoby Jones, who was like right in the middle uh, of both of those two. Um, he wasn't like a veteran veteran, but he wasn't like this super, super young guy. But playmaker. Playmaker. Um, but anyway. Oh, and Dennis Pitter. I ain't trying to go through the whole list. But he said, uh, the way uh, this season is currently shaping up, it appears the organization is trying to follow the same formula. Do you think the organizational beliefs are uh, that that's the only way to win? Hence the hesitation to be aggressive with offensive players like they do with defensive players. Thank you in advance for taking my question. Keep doing what you're doing. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think that the, the Ravens, they they want to win their way. Um, now, it's funny because I, I, I was listening to a conversation with Stephen A. Smith and Keyshawn Johnson, and I love the conversation because they both brought out great points. But one of the biggest things that they were talking about was philosophy. Keyshawn Johnson was like, this is this is what the Ravens do. He's like, they're winning. They're seven and three right now. Um, they've been making the playoffs all these years. He said that that's, this is their philosophy. This is who they are. They want to run the ball, play good defense. And he was like, in the playoffs, when you run the ball and play good defense, he said, that's what truly wins you playoff games. But Stephen A. Smith was like, hold up. Yeah, this has been their philosophy, but what has it gotten them in the playoffs? Have they been winning in the playoffs? No, they certainly haven't. So wouldn't you want to change something with that? So I, I just love the, the the back and forth that they were having because they each brought out really, really good points. Um, but I, I do really believe um, that, like you mentioned, I, I think the Ravens really feel like their way is their way. And that's what they're going to do. So, hey, come playoff time. We're going to see how it works out. Hopefully it does. We'll see. Relax, people. Next question came from another new person sitting in the question, Luffy. He said, what's up, Engraven? I've been watching you for a while, but this is my first question. I found your channel around the time uh, Lamar got drafted, and, and uh, I never really wanted to keep up with the team as extensively as I do now <laughs> uh, until I watch your videos. Hey, I, thank you, man. For real. Seriously, I, I, this is, that's, that's special, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, he said, uh, I like the way you explain things while adding humor to <laughs> He said, I like the way you explain things while adding humor to your commentary and your rants are my favorite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Um, he said, last week I said on the stream that Marcus Williams and Rokon Smith reminded me of the old Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. I didn't mean that they play like them. What I meant was that they're this 2022 version of them regarding the championship team. Everyone has been comparing the 2012 championship Ravens with, the, with Joe Flacco's contract situation to this year's team and Lamar's contract situation. All I'm saying is that they are out... Uh, they are our premier, premier defensive playmakers, just as the 2012 team had theirs. Another small comparison that also reminds, well, real quick, before we move on. Um, yeah, Marcus, that's, man, this defense is playing excellent. They ain't even got Marcus Williams back yet. Bowser's still coming into his own. Ajabo ain't even hit the scene yet. But Marcus Williams is out, man. man. If only we could turn off injuries. We could just turn off injury just for one season, man. Oh, ooh, boy. Anyway, he said, uh, another small comparison that also reminds me of the essence of the 2012 team is Jacoby Jones and Duvernay. But I think they are purposely not giving Duvernay opportunity because they didn't expect him to have a jump like this to help out Lamar. So in order to keep his number down, they don't play Duvernay now. I believe, I know we need a number one, but Lamar's so talented, I believe he could get it done with Duv, Mark, and Robinson. Granted that uh, Bateman is out and with the help of Gus and J.K., 
Mm. See, see, he he talking about the business right there with dude. He said these pieces are enough to get there and compete because we have Lamar Jackson. But a number one receiver is total domination. Appreciate you for being you. Love watching you progress. And just like Marcus Peters, sadly, I'm out. <laughs> he ain't gotta do MP like that, man. He ain't do nothing to you, man. But um, I, I appreciate that. That 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 was a uh, a fun read. Um, so thank you. But yeah, man. Um. Yeah, the whole receiver thing. We know how that goes. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens next year. Um, but, yeah, uh, Marcus Williams, it's going to be nice when he comes back, man. It's going to be nice. I wonder if he's going to come back, like, fully healed or he's going to come back with, like, a boot on his – I mean, a cast on his hand. Not a boot. A boot is for feet. But if he's going to come back with a cast on his hand or what, I'm just really curious to see how that goes. But I'm very excited for him to return. Um, yeah, Roquan Smith. I, and again, we know that they're not Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. They 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 can't be. Like that's that's unfair to ask them to be those guys. But like you mentioned, this 2022 version uh, and just the big impact that those guys have had, uh, and they haven't even got a chance to play together yet. Yeah, this feels like a dream.